Hey folks, my name's Ollie. Welcome back to the channel. I don't think you should go to university. So here's what you should do instead. First and foremost, we need to get a few caveats out of the way. Of course, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to do dentistry, you should go to university. There's not really any more options in the UK that would facilitate a career in this. But if there's any part of you that has any sort of hesitation towards university, absolutely, you should avoid going. So there's a little bit of context and to give my words a little bit more meaning. I'm currently a 21 year old student studying liberal arts at King's College London. However, this is my first year at university. And in fact, I took not one, but two gap years prior to joining this year. As such, I'm not completely against the idea of university, but I just think that people would benefit so much from having a little bit more perspective on the wider world, which you just don't get if you immediately jump from sixth form or college into university. I've spoken to a lot of students, like 18 year old, 19 year old university students, a little bit younger, um, what was it, sixth form, college, things like that. And everybody kind of has the same thought process. You stay in this rigid structure, at least in the UK and most sort of Western nations, where you go to primary school, secondary school, and then some sort of higher qualification, so A-levels or T-levels, I think, are a new thing. And you do this at college or sixth form, and then you move into university, where you get a degree, and in an ideal world, you graduate with a 2-1 or a first, and come out at the end of the day with a job. But where does this job lead? Like, <laughs> if we're lucky, we have five, maybe 10 years of retirement, free time, and a little bit of money to enjoy that time. There is so much more to life than that and you need to start living now in the present when you're young. And with this rigid structure that the education system offers, you kind of lose the forest from the trees. You lose sight of what's important and what actually makes you happy. Because ultimately, I think that's what everybody really wants, just to be happy. So you might think that, yeah, whilst studying hard in school and getting good grades would make you happy, that's quite a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Because of course, those good grades would imply a movement towards a good job. And a good job implies that you're getting money and have a bit of security for ultimately when you retire. Again, that's just looking too far ahead in the future. And I think people, especially students, would benefit a lot more from just living day to day, moment to moment. And it's quite cliche, but really just seizing the day. So that was a little bit of an introduction, a little bit of contextualizing why I'm here saying this. So what's the point of this video? Well, I wanna provide you with a few different options and access to information that I didn't have at 18. And when I left school, in a way it's surprising that not many education institutes talk about this, especially when you're leaving school, a lot of the focus, at least in my experience, tended to be on university and people trying to pursue a, a career down a more academic path. So I'm proposing that you should take a gap year or at the very least, consider taking a gap year. The amount of personal growth you will experience will be insurmountable by university and it will give you a new sense of perspective on what's important to you and whether or not university constitutes importance or happiness in your own life. Fundamentally, I would argue that you have three main options if you want to take a gap year. These three options do come with the caveat that you'd have to supplement them a little bit with income. So wherever you get this from, whether work or I mean, I, I'd expect that it's, it's some degree of, of work, you know, that is a little bit of a caveat. But equally, that can be rewarding in its own way. You know, you're learning how to interact with people, how the workplace works, all of that is good stuff. So option one is working at a camp. Now I have worked at two camps in the summer of 2022. I worked in a an American camp at a camp just outside of Pennsylvania. And in the summer of 2023, just gone, I worked in a camp in Canada about two and a half hours north of Toronto. So this is the option that I probably feel most educated to speak on from first-hand experience. As a little side note, I think that these camps are offered in Australia as well, but I'm not 100% sure. And I think typically people associate it with sort of North America. Um, obviously America and, and Canada have this long heritage and tradition of summer camps. So for those of you that don't know, at a summer camp, you basically apply to go and work uh, at a, a camp where parents send their children for the summer. This varies from, I think in some camps, 
children are sent there for a week up to sort of seven, eight weeks the whole summer. So obviously this is an amazing consideration if you like working with children, but equally there are so many more pros that come with working at a camp. I think the most important thing about summer camps is that they're very organized and it's a great sort of starting off point if you want to start looking at options away from university because you are looked after um, in most camps you get your food and sort of your your lodge where you stay where you live taken care of and that's all looked after and included within the, the the terms of the employment and of course as well this is a job so whilst it doesn't necessarily feel like employment all the time you do get paid for it so you do get some sort of compensation for your your time and your energy but equally i think the main thing with camps is the the experience that you get at the end of it and the person that it sort of shapes you into being. It's important to mention that camp is more about the experience because if I'm being frank, the first time that you go, the money and the salary probably isn't going to be as high. Well, let's face it, it's not going to be as high as if you had a summer job working at a supermarket. So in my experience, the money you earn from the salary at camp is very much negated by the money you have to spend getting over to Canada or the USA. And then of course, the money that you might choose to spend on your days off at camp or indeed any traveling you might do after. And again, that sort of feeds into the idea that camp is a great first step for people that are a little bit uncertain or maybe have a little bit of anxiety about um, being independent away from university and doing this traveling because everything is geared for you to meet people you meet like-minded people from all over the world, which is honestly one of the most amazing things and the things that I took from camp the most, the friendships that I still have with friends in Colombia, friends in Mexico, I have friends in Hungary. It's really fantastic. But of course, with that said, there is a little bit of admin that you have to do to get your visa and to get your work permit, things like that. But again, the great thing with camp is that there are so many companies out there that help you with your work visa, help you with getting over to Canada or America, or even finding a, a job at a summer camp in the first place. So the company that immediately jumps out is Camp America. Some of you might have heard of that before, but equally there are lots of other companies available. Some that spring out are Boonac, Camp Leaders, you have Camp Canada as well. Uh, and I'll leave a couple of these in the description below so you can check out their websites. There are pros and cons for each of the companies, but fundamentally they do the same thing in that they send uh, international, typically students, people around student age from about 18 to 24, and they help to facilitate you working in a summer camp. So as a final consideration for working in a summer camp is that typically the season is only over summer. So you'd have to consider this either if you immediately finished your A-levels, that would be sort of the summer that you would be able to go. If you decide to take a gap year, it'd have to be at, that's the summer at the end. So that is a little bit of consideration because obviously you have a lot of time in the middle where perhaps you want to fill that. So option number two is backpacking. Now backpacking is an amazing experience. I've had the privilege of backpacking around Southeast Asia, currently in the process of planning a backpacking trip around South America this coming summer. Essentially backpacking is a sort of travel and cultural experience where you compact all of your belongings for the trip in a small-ish backpack and go to the other side of the world. Now, I'll be honest, this was something that I only felt comfortable doing after I'd been to camp for the first time and I developed this sense of independence and confidence in myself that I could travel to unknown places by myself. However, of course, backpacking doesn't have to be something independent, but I'd say from my experience, the most personal growth you'll get is if you go alone by yourself. Um, of course, there are some considerations depending on parts of the world you want to travel to, where it might be a better idea to, to go in a pair. But honestly, I'd say no more than two people. And I think that that's really what backpacking is made for. And like I say, places that you could choose to backpack, kind of popular places, Southeast Asia, so around like Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, uh, South America as well, and Central America. And Australia and New Zealand is actually quite popular as well with backpackers. Now, some pros with backpacking is that it could be fast, a lot faster than camp if you are leaving it to the following summer. 
Essentially, the, the limiting factor in backpacking is how much money you have. So if you have enough money to immediately buy your ticket to Bangkok and travel the next day, well then that's something that can be instant. And also as well, backpacking probably offers the most independence out of all of the options I'm gonna discuss. And if that's a consideration, I think independence is really one of the main driving forces that echoes personal growth. But backpacking does carry some risks and it's probably one of the things that you have to think about the most in terms of safety, especially if you're going to an unfamiliar country, perhaps traveling for the first time, especially if you're going to a place where you don't speak the native language, this is certainly a consideration. However, of course, there are some varying degrees to which you can plan your backpacking trip. But what I will say is try and keep your plan as open as possible, right? You don't want to close down any opportunities before you've even gone. I mean, you might turn up to a hostel the first night and meet your best friend. That's a possibility. And then all of a sudden you realize that they're going a different way to you and you can't change your, your flight or your bus that you've already pre-booked. And as the final kind of con for backpacking is money, right? It's probably one of the more expensive options, but equally it teaches you a lot about budgeting and sort of planning with your money and being kind of stringent with what you want to spend and when. Now we're gonna go into the third and final option for if you decide to take a gap year, which is volunteering. Typically a lot of these types of volunteering opportunities are located in Africa and Asia, obviously certain parts of the world where the income is a little bit lower and more aid is kind of required, right? Now, I think this is one of the more altruistic things that you can do in your life. And obviously, if you decide to, to do this, it's gonna give you lifelong stories and memories, even more so than the two ideas I previously discussed. Not that many people get the opportunity to volunteer. Now look, again, this comes with some considerations that you have to think about before volunteering in so much as, again, the safety and danger. But this kind of goes hand in hand with the companies because I would very much recommend you use some sort of company to facilitate going over to Africa or Asia and volunteering. Now, one of the more well-known companies is IBHQ. Again, I will leave a link down in the description for a little bit more information. These guys are much more qualified than me to talk on this. But yeah, there's lots of different opportunities to volunteer. You can volunteer with animals. Again, you can volunteer with children. And yeah, just have a quick look on the website and browse and see what piques your interest. So to sort of bookend this video, I don't think you should go to university. Well, at least not straight away. Instead, if it's at all within your means, please take a gap year. I'm trying to pursue one of these three opportunities. Now, these aren't the only three opportunities available to you as somebody on a gap year, but I think they're the three of the most common and equally some of the most rewarding things that you can do. But if I was to sum it up even more, I think the best advice I can give you is to push yourself as far out of your comfort zone as you physically can. Because ultimately, this is where we grow the most. We grow the most when we're stressed and put in environments that kind of teeter that line between comfort and complete discomfort. Things that you can just about handle. I think the really cool thing about taking a gap year, or indeed multiple gap years in my case, is that you can really chart this personal growth through things and progressions in your life. So even though I started by getting a job, I moved into a camp and backpacked, and now I'm looking at volunteering. That's not to say that there's an inherent hierarchy between them, but certainly the your comfort zone sort of shrinks as you become more independent. I don't think this independence is something that university teaches in the best way. I'm speaking from first-hand experience. Whether you decide to work at a summer camp, backpack, or volunteer, all of these ways just give you a wider perspective on life outside of the education system. This is a subject that I'm really passionate about because I just wish that I had this kind of information available to me at 18. I think that whilst university does have tremendous merits, there are so many more opportunities in the world that you need to go and experience and see whilst you still can. And the transition time between 18 and if you decide to go to university, whatever age that might be, is such a fantastic time for you to really mold and grow as a person. So I hope this video has provided you with a little bit of context and a little bit of information fundamentally, right, about the options that are available. But of course, if you have any specific requests or any questions that you think I can answer, please leave a comment down below and I will get back to you. And of course, if you'd like me to go into any more detail on any of the topics I talked about today, I am more than happy to make another video specifically on that topic. You just leave a comment and let me know. So thank you so much for watching this video. And what I wish I knew at 18 was that I should not go to university and instead I should take a gap year.